So you want to get into Berserk? Well, good news, you picked the right series to get into. There's quite the backlog for you to enjoy. It's also not as confusing or convoluted as other series you may want to try to get into. I'm looking at you, Kingdom Hearts. There's definitely a lot to it, and it might seem intimidating at first, but here's a comprehensive guide of everything you need to know about Berserk. Berserk is a manga that started in 1989, written by Kentaro Miura. It is currently ongoing. Unfortunately, we are in the season of hiatus. Now, before you get into Berserk, I do have to warn you that the risks and dangers of getting into it. You may die before before Berserk ends. Berserk is notorious for having long hiatuses when Kentaro Miura goes up into the mountains and disappears for months and years on end to find spiritual meaning. Also, he has an idol master addiction. But if that doesn't scare you off and you're a very patient person, then good for you. Welcome aboard. The three main players of Berserk are Guts, Casca, and Griffith. The reason why I'm introducing them and saying their names is because there is plenty of mistranslations. In some translations, Guts' name is Gats, Gatsu, Goats, and other weird variations. Griffith is sometimes called Griffithsu, Griffith, Griffoth, it's Griffith. Puck is also called Pack, Poke, Peak, and other weird spellings of Puck, but it's P-U-C-K. I want to clear this up so when you read certain translations, you won't be completely confused when it goes from one thing to another, depending on what website you're using. I haven't really run into any weird mistranslations of Casca's name, maybe just a slight misspelling from chapter to chapter, but nothing too drastic. If you want the most pure and best way to experience Berserk, then I'm going to tell you to read the manga. Kentaro Miura's art is gorgeous. I cannot emphasize how beautiful it really is. There is so much painstaking detail in every panel, something that just can't be translated to other mediums as well. Now, depending on what website you're using, it's going to be a little confusing. It starts on 00A. Do not start on chapter 1, because that's already halfway through the golden age. I don't know why they formatted it like this, but most websites seem to be like that. If you're going to be reading it physically, then just start on volume one. There's also the prototype chapters that you can read to see what Berserk was originally going to be. Guts had an eye patch. It's really interesting to see how much was changed during the planning periods of Berserk. There is also the quote-unquote lost chapter, chapter 83, which Kentaro Miura asked to have stopped printing and wanted it to be removed from canon because it introduced ideas that he thought would determine the range of where he could tell the story. He didn't want to feel like he was putting himself in a box. He wanted to be completely free with how he wanted to tell his story. You can read it online, but just remember, as of right now, it's considered not canon, even though the story hasn't exactly pointed towards it not being canon otherwise, so maybe later on it can be reintroduced. Just keep that in the back of your mind. If you're someone who has trouble sitting down and reading for hours on end, good news for you, there are some alternatives. Not very good alternatives, but alternatives nonetheless. The 1997 anime is pretty passable. It's probably the best way to adapt Berserk, even if there are some plots cut out. Puck isn't in the anime, and they cut out a lot of subplots, but I guess it's bound to happen when you have so much material to cover, and in such a short time, like an anime. You're being warned now that the intro song is fucking trash. I'm playing it in the background right now, and you can definitely tell for sure that this doesn't fit the tone of Berserk at all. Then there are the three Golden Age movies, which are, again, passable. I definitely say that 1997 is the best option to go for if you want to watch something, because, again, lots of cut plot points. The animation is really shoddy in certain parts of these movies, because there's just no budget. The third one probably looks the best, even if there are things cut out from it. Honestly, if you don't have the ability to go back and appreciate something that looks kind of eh, like the 1997 anime, then I guess this is the option for you. And then there's Berserk 2016-2017. I've already made a video on 2016 and why it's fucking atrocious and should never be viewed by the human eye. And I'm currently working on the 2017 video. So instead of watching the anime, just watch those videos instead. Now for the games. Surprisingly, yes, Berserk does have games. Multiple. Probably haven't heard of them because they're not really that popular. One of them hasn't even been released in the West. The first game is Sword of Berserk Guts' Rage for the Dreamcast. If you're wondering, is this the one with the ball sack? Yes. This game takes place between volumes 22 and 23. It's also written by Miura, so I guess it's canon? This takes place like right before Farnese and Serpico run back into Guts and they join his group and start their journey together with him. I'm pretty sure all the characters that are new for this game are exclusively for it. I don't think anyone else has ever mentioned or referenced again. I could be completely wrong. The game is really short. You could probably finish it in one sitting. It's only about three hours long, depending on how much you get stuck because the combat is a little janky. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna fool 
fool you. It's on the Dreamcast, so it had one of the worst controllers ever made. Its biggest issue is when you're in tight corridors, which happens quite a bit, the sword keeps hitting the wall, causing it to spark, and you just end up keep getting hit because you can't actually fucking swing your weapon at the enemies. But the boss designs really make up for it, and I definitely recommend checking it out just for them alone. The game is full of old school voice actors and a lot of Konami regulars. Puck is voiced by Cam Clark, who voiced Liquid. Zod is played by Peter Lurie, who was also the voice actor for Vulcan Raven in Metal Gear Solid 1. Guts is voiced by Michael Bell, who was the fear in Metal Gear Solid 3. He's also like half the fucking cast in Rugrats. Ballsack is played by Earl Bone, who was Sergei Golovkovich in MGS2. Rita was voiced by Paul Atiso, who voiced Lulu in Final Fantasy X. Casca is played by BJ Ward, who was Velma in all the Scooby-Doo shows. Overall, though, it is a fun little game to play. If you for some reason still own a Dreamcast or forgot that you had one in your closet and want to own a physical version of this game to play it, you could probably get one used for about $30 on Amazon. If you want a sealed copy that's brand new and still in the wrapping, it's about $120. Up next is the PS2 game, Berserk Millennium Empire R, Chapter of the Holy Demon War. Now you may be going, oh, I didn't know Berserk had a PS2 game. Yeah, that's because it was never released outside of Japan. Oh. But don't worry, that won't stop any of us, because some dedicated fans made an English patch. You just have to emulate it, and there you go. It actually plays really well, and it's really fucking fun to play. There's a lot of cool, unique, original bosses for the game. It's made by Yukes, who's unfortunately now tied to making annual wrestling games against their will. It's really unfortunate this game was never released here, because it is really fucking cool, and I would like to own a physical English copy. But having an English patch for it is better than nothing. I don't want to show off too much for this game, I really want people to just go play it themselves. It's really fun. Good. It also somehow manages to have better animations than the Berserk 2016 anime. And this was released in 2004. Yikes. You get yourself a physical copy of the game off Amazon for about 30 bucks. Now for our final game is the most recent one. It came out last year. And that is Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. Now that title's fucking awful, so everyone just refers to it as Berserk Muso. If you've ever played a Dynasty Warriors game, then you definitely know what you're getting yourself into. But for those who don't, Dynasty Warriors is a long-running series by Tecmo Koei, based on the historic novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms. It's a very simplistic hack and slash. You go from point A to point B, enter an area, fight off all the enemies, they retreat and then you move on to the next one. So if that doesn't seem really appealing to you and it might come off repetitive because it somewhat is, then maybe you shouldn't get into this game. The way I see it, it is somewhat similar to the JoJo's All-Star Battle game, which is a fan game first, a fighting game second. It had terrible balance, tons of infinite loops, crouching kick is still the most broken move in the game. But you just play it and you go, oh my god, he does the thing, and how every single movement is just frame by frame panel related things, and it's just so good and so cool to be able to just play them as a fan of the series. I plan to do a full-fledged review of this game eventually, but for now I'm going to go a little bit more in-depth compared to the previous two games because this is the one I've had the most experience with. A lot of the characters are pretty pointless, they don't really bring anything new to the table. Honestly, it could have just been Guts as the main character and the only playable character because he plays the most unique and then have Griffith and maybe Skull Knight or Zod or Grunbell, but like Casca really doesn't bring anything new, her gameplay isn't too different and varied to warrant her having a character other than going, oh, that's cool, I could play as Casca. There is definitely a little bit too much of grinding that you have to do to get to the cool stuff and do a lot of fluff and waste your time kind of missions. But once you get to unlock the Berserker armor and just, just fucking let loose, it feels so good. If you're a huge fan of the series, I definitely recommend picking this up. I say wait and get it on sale or if you get it like $20, maybe 30 tops, I would not pay full price or anything more than 25 max. I'd say 30 or more or if you're a really hardcore fan or you just want to support the series and Miura and show that there is an interest in Berserk in the West and they should translate games if they ever make more. But honestly, it really is not worth the $60 price tag. If none of those games do sound appealing to you, then just go play the Souls games because they're basically Berserk-inspired games through and through. There's so many references and callbacks. The icon in the top left corner of Bloodborne is basically the brand of the sacrifice. There are tons of videos out there where you can just watch all of the Berserk references and inspirations that are in the Dark Souls series. Please, from Soft, let Miyazaki make an official Berserk game. That would be fucking amazing. If you've made it this far in the video, I hope I have piqued your interest in Berserk and you are interested enough to check it out. Berserk is my favorite series ever, so I really love to talk about it and share with other people. And if I could even just get one person to have the same experience I did and have the same love and affinity for this series, honestly, that is the best feeling you could possibly have. I still remember.
remember coming home and seeing all the threads on A about Guts finally getting off the boat and how excited everybody was. And that was just a momentous occasion. That was so much fun. And I just hope other people can get the same amount of mileage I do out of this series. We may be back in hiatus season now, or at least approaching it because every chapter doesn't have a set date now for when the next one's coming out. But I am very excited to see where Miura takes it next, and I will patiently wait for the next one. And I hope to see you guys there too.